All right, let's continue our conversation on short-term liabilities. One of the typical short-term liabilities a business would have would be payroll, right? Because they owe their people and the people expect to get paid within, you know, within a year for sure. All right, but let's talk about payroll a little bit um, as far as the terms. Let's gross pay. You may have heard these terms before. You may be familiar with them, but you may not be either. So let's talk about them a little bit. Gross pay can either be listed hourly, right? You can be salaried. You can be paid on commission. Um, hourly people are usually covered by the Fair Labor Standards Act. And just to put it out there, anybody working more than 40 hours uh, being paid hourly is should be paid one and a half times their regular rate. Um, the only people that that is exempt for is if you are maybe the manager in a business that's paid hourly. It, if that's the case, then you don't get that necessarily get that one and a half times rate. But the idea is that this is your full pay. This is everything. This is before any deductions are taken out. That's referred to as your gross pay. So just a simple example, like let's say you've got a regular employee who's making $10 an hour. That's your hourly wage. They work 43 hours during the week. Oops, that's an old number. Ignore that. <laughs> Um, the gross pay, the, what they would, what their gross pay would be, would be the full amount, the forty dollars, forty hours at ten dollars an hour. I think I need to up that to eleven, right? Um, and anything over that, they make what's called time and a half. So instead of ten dollars an hour, they're going to make fifteen dollars an hour. So that's four hundred and forty-five dollars. Anybody who's ever made time and a half knows it's an amazing thing, <laughs> and their gross pay would be four hundred and forty-five. Um, if you're paid salary, that just means. Your hours don't matter. You are expected to work, um, you know, a certain amount of time. It just, it is what it is. If I, you know, if you're a salaried employee, it just means you make, say, $40,000 a year, period. They don't track how many hours you're not paid in an hourly rate. Um, commission, that's when somebody's getting paid based on a sales item. So salespeople, people who sell cars, um, larger items like that, they're usually making commission, which is a percentage of their sales. Okay. Net pay is easier. Well, not easier. Net pay is what we, we care about. That's what the che what the check that's going to go into our bank account is going to be. So that is the gross pay, right? Everything minus deductions gives you net pay. All right. So the deductions is what we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about just to make you familiar with them. Now I tell my students this all the time. You should always look at what's coming out of your paycheck to make sure the numbers make sense and to make sure you understand what is coming out of there. All right, so some of the typical withholding deductions is certainly going to have to pay federal income tax, right? That's what we do. That you pay about federal income tax. Um, we'll talk about the forms you're dealing with. You deal with to figure out how much the federal income tax is going to be that comes out of your paycheck on the next slide. Um, but federal income tax is one of your bigger ones, right? That's what we do the tax return for in April. You know, by April 15th of the following year, that is all about your federal income tax. In addition. State income tax. Um, not every state has income taxes. New Jersey has them. They're rather high. Um, it is what it is. There's some states that have higher income taxes and some states that have lower income taxes. And some states, as I said, don't have them at all. I say it's about eight to ten states don't have income taxes. Uh, Texas is a big one. Florida is a big one. Um, I want to say Alaska. And there's a bunch more, and I don't want to say them because I'm afraid that I'll have them wrong, but it's an easy Google to see what states don't have income tax. Now, just because they don't pay, you don't pay taxes on your income doesn't mean they don't get their money in other ways. So I have a friend who just moved to Texas, and she's, you know, horrified at the taxes they pay, their sales taxes on things like milk, or just their overall higher prices on certain things. And I'm like, just because you don't have a state income tax doesn't mean the state doesn't get the money in some way in order to function. It just means you're not paying the tax based on your income. So just putting that out there. Um, Social Security taxes, also referred to as OASDI, which is Old Age and Survivors Disabilities Insurance, if I remember correctly. Uh, Social Security is 6.2% on the first $142,800 that you make. Okay, the problems that you'll see in this book, books a couple of, some of the problems are a couple of years old, and the number we're using is 118.5. The idea is that every year this number gets increased, not insignificantly, a pretty decent amount. Um, so this is only a couple of years difference between the 118.5, that was the cap a few years ago, and the 142.8, that is the current cap for 2021. I think that's, yeah. All right. The idea is that you pay 6.2% taxes up to 142.8, and then as soon as you get beyond 142.8, you don't pay Social Security taxes anymore. All right. 
Um, and that is referred to, you hear that, Social Security. Uh, well, let me, let's talk about who gets Social Security. Social Security is intended for people who've retired, right? Because the idea is they're paying into the system, and then when they retire, they get back out of the system. It was also, though, it already says the old age, survivors. So survivors, um, if you have a child whose parent died and they have paid into the Social Security system, they get a portion of the parent's Social Security tax because the parents never going to collect it, right? So they get a portion of that Social Security tax until they get, until they pay out, rather, until they become 18. Um, disability, some people are disabled and can't work. They get, even if they haven't paid into the Social Security system, they can still get paid out from the Social Security system. Okay, so this covers a lot of bases here. Medicare tax. Medicare is meant for um, tax for the, it, not med, it is the medical care for elderly, right? And it is 1.45% of all pay. So there's no cap. So there's no 142.8. You pay it all. If you make a million dollars a year, you're going to pay 1.45% on a million dollars a year. All right. There is an additional Medicare tax that has been uh, put into play. Don't have the number for you, but it's for high wage earners. I want to say it's another one and a half percent, also about there, and it's for people who make beyond a certain salary, one hundred and fifty or two hundred. Off the top of my head, I don't remember. Um, but the idea is that you pay extra because you can, because you make lots of money. All right, and that goes primarily towards um, the Affordable Care Act, right? That came into play under Obama, and, uh, under the Obama administration. Okay, so those two together, you may have heard to is referred to as FICA. All right, Social Security and Medicare are often referred to together as FICA taxes. You should see and be able to calculate on your own paycheck the Social Security and Medicare piece. Now, those are the, your mandatory ones. Your optional ones, right, medical insurance, if you take out medical insurance, that's a typical deduction. 401k, if you can contribute to a 401k, you do it the minute you can. Okay, because it's like free money if, that you're passing up by not contributing to 401k. The idea is you put in a dollar into your 401k for your own retirement savings, and your employer usually puts in a certain amount as well. And it's pre-tax, so it's actually even better for you financially to put it in. Net, better than putting it into a savings account, okay? Put it in in advance in a 401k if it's offered to you. So like I said, some, uh, companies will usually have a match, 25 cents, 50 cents. It's free money. Why wouldn't you take it? All right. And the thing is, is even if you think, well, I'm only going to be at that job for a few months or for a year or whatever, it doesn't matter. You can roll your 401k into your next job's 401k if you want to. All right. You can just keep carrying it forward from job to job. That is a very normal practice. And it's one you should take advantage of as early as you can. Because the more you put away when you're, when you're younger, the better off you are for sure when you're older. Okay. That's my little diatribe about 401ks. Um, like I said before, federal income tax, how much is getting withheld? It's not so easy to calculate. Like, you can't calculate it by hand so easily. Um, but it's determined based on the filing status that you actually input when you're filling out that W-4. You know how you get a slew of paperwork when you're starting a job? Well, one of those things that you're filling out is W-4. And you indicate what your filing status is. You indicate dependents. You have other income adjustments. There's a lot going on in this form. We're just going to hit the basics of it. All right, so this is what your typical W-4 form looks like. At least this is 2020's version. All right, you fill out the top part, your name, your address, and all that kind of good stuff. And really, the main determining factor on how much you're getting taken out is based on what you select right at the very beginning. Are you single or, single or are you married filing separately, right? So some people are married, but they file separately for a variety of reasons. Uh, married filing jointly, right? So I'm married. I do our tax returns. I'm noted as married filing jointly. Or head of household. So if you are unmarried, but you maybe you have a dependent that you take care of, that that's that head of household status there. That's going to be your primary indicator. Uh, there you go, filing status. Um, you might have multiple jobs. So the thing is, is this is you can do the math, and this is you know this is a step beyond our, this conversation. But I just want you to realize that you have this option. So if you have multiple jobs you can actually go to the IRS's website, here you go, irs.gov slash W4 app, and you can figure out what your withholding should be if you do have those multiple jobs. Because the idea is that they withhold, they don't realize that you have this uh, extra second salary, so they may not be withholding enough. So at the end of the year, when you go to your tax return, you may wind up in a bad spot. Okay, um, dependents. 
this matters a little bit less these days because you we actually remove the dependent exemption, but there's a little bit. If you have uh, children under the age of 17, you want to calculate that. You usually get $2,000 on your tax return for them. And if you have other dependents over 17 or maybe a parent or whatever, and you're able to, you know, there's a bunch of people you can claim as dependents. Uh, there's a whole list. You would have potentially $500 for them. So if you want to claim dependents, you can here. Other adjustments. Now this is, you know, other. If you make money um, that and you don't have any withholding coming out on it, let's say you're something like an Uber driver, and I, I feel like this is currently in argument, <laughs> this Uber driver part, um, whether or not they should have withholding, whether or not they're technically employees. But right now, I don't think Uber drivers have money coming out when they make money. Like they just get a gross amount. They don't have any deductions. If that's the case and you want your current job to withhold money for you with the fact that you have that extra money without getting withholding, that's something you can put into here. So you basically take more money out of the job that you do have withholding on to offset the fact that you don't have withholding it at your other job. Okay. I'm, I hope I'm not too confusing here because I can't give you any concrete numbers to work with. This is just kind of giving you an idea of what is on this form. Um, something that I do. I always owe money to New Jersey. I don't know why. Well, I do know why. But, I mean, New Jersey is a really hard state in the sense of they are what's known as a gross income state. So they don't care if you lose money on, like, investments or what have you. They're, you don't get to take that off of your tax return. Uh, New Jersey just cares about what did you earn. They don't care about your losses. Just what did you earn. So if that's the case, I always wind up in the position of owing them money. It just is the case. So if you find yourself in that position often, you might just take out extra withholding. And that's what I have, like, $50 a paycheck. It just is more palatable than turning around owing them several hundred dollars or a thousand dollars at year end. All right, so those are the main pieces of your W-4, and that is what determines what comes out for your federal withholding. Uh, if you're in New Jersey, there's an NJW-4, but it's pretty much the same idea. And in general, if you find that you're not being withheld high enough, uh, for example, I wasn't being withheld high enough, or really, my husband is being withheld high enough. He puts us in a bad spot every year, but I can never get him to go talk to human resources and go get it fixed. Um, so what I do is I do married filing jointly, but I withhold at the higher single rate. So that's an option that your pay, your pay people can do for you. Okay, so I still I withhold at the higher single rate just to offset the fact that I can't get him to go to human resources and fix his withholding. Okay, so we're going to go into a calculation in a moment, and I'll see you in the next video.